So today I'm gonna to be sharing my resume that got me interviews with a couple of different fang companies. So I did interview with all these companies, but those stories are for another day. I'm just gonna be talking through my resume, um, critiquing it a little bit, as well as giving some tips. This is the basic resume template that is from, we call it the Scheller template, because that's our college of business at Georgia Tech, but I'm pretty sure this is like a really standard resume template that pretty much any college gives their college students to use. So as you can see up top, I have my full name. So some people will put like their middle initial or whatever, but this is just my full name. And then right here, as you can see with this gap that I just underlined right here, um, this is actually where I had all of my PII. So I had like my address, I had my phone number, I had my email address, and then I also had a website, which my website was pretty much just the website version of my resume but I listed all those things atop there so people would know how to contact me and then the last couple things to get out of the way for having a basic college resume is that you want your resume to only be one page you do not want your resume to be any longer than that you're in college you really shouldn't have a need to have more than a page longer for a resume and recruiters will not read more than a page especially if you're in college and then along with that atop here you can actually see that it says Thompson at WC resume 2 you actually want to name your resume with your I usually did last name first name and you can do like last name underscore first name but you want to have some sort of identification on your resume and not just name it resume because recruiters are probably downloading so many resumes all the time so you want to make sure that your resume actually identifies you and then the last thing it's really simple but make sure that when you submit your resume it's a pdf for the actual content of my resume i clearly have here i have education atop and then i have work experience projects and activities uh, so we're going to start at the top with education. So this is pretty simple. It is basically just whatever college that you went to. You also want to obviously put your major as well as, you know, when you expect it to graduate. And then I personally, I put my GPA on there. Honestly, GPA does matter, but it's kind of hard in this case where in that colleges aren't standardized. A 3.65 at Georgia Tech could be like a 4.0 at another school, you know what I mean? So it's still a good idea to put it on there because some jobs do require you to have above like a maybe like a 3.0 or something like that. Um, so I recommend putting it on there. And then along with that, over here at my major where I have my threads. So if you go to Georgia Tech and probably if you watch my videos, cause I say this every single time, but my threads were people and intelligence and to a recruiter, this may or may not mean something. So this is a critique I have for my past self where I wish I had changed this to say concentration and then have my concentration be HCI, which is people, and then artificial intelligence as my intelligence thread. Because threads are a Georgia Tech kind of like lingo. Most people outside of, you know, who didn't go to Georgia Tech, so people who go to Georgia Tech and, aren't, and are not CS majors might not even know what thread means. So you wanna make sure that you don't really use any jargon or any acronyms or anything like that. You wanna make sure that everything is spelled out to where pretty much anyone you know, who I guess has a basic knowledge of what job you're applying to would know exactly what you're talking about on your resume. So next on there, I have my technical skills. So as you can see, I listed my programming languages and then I listed a couple of different frameworks. And then at the end, I finished with some UX skills. So a critique for myself is that firstly, I would take out Android Studio. This does not need to be in here. Android Studio is an IDE. You don't need to put that. It's like you're gonna put like, you know how to use IntelliJ, just leave that out there, don't put any IDEs. I think having languages and frameworks at the beginning is a great idea. Aside from having Agile on there, I think I had too many uh, different terms for just kind of saying like these ux -y things, prototyping, usability, testing, heuristic evaluations. Yes, those are different skill sets, but I think that I probably could have kept my technical skills just to one line and, you know, kind of just picked out one of those three UX skills that I feel like I really honed in on. And then continuing on, in terms of technical skills, I'll see some other people list just maybe just skills and then within their skills, they'll have like public speaking, good communicator, collaboration. Do not, and I mean do not, uh, this is just, I mean, this is my own opinion. This entire video is my own opinion, but I would strongly recommend against putting those kind of skills on your resume, A, because they really just take up space. And if your resume is only one page, you're trying to utilize as much space as you can. And B, those skills are things that are shown throughout your interview. So your interview is gonna pick up on if you're good at public speaking. Your interview is gonna pick up on if you have collaboration skills with the way that you describe, you know, how you answer these behavioral questions and how you worked in projects and whatnot. So you really don't need to put those skills, those soft skills on there because those will be showcased in your interview. And then next in education, I have relevant coursework. So I listed out all of the 
I mean, what it is, the relevant coursework that I felt would actually be, I guess, useful for recruiters to know. I actually didn't used to have this um, for, I guess, three years until my senior year when so this is my senior year resume and then i went to this like resume prep course that google was hosting and they had relevant coursework on there and they said it was a good idea to put it on there i'm still a little bit back and forth but obviously you know if google says to put it on there you put it on there i feel like the classes you know they did showcase what i know but at the same time i don't know if i was just kind of like wasting space if they actually really cared to see that i took computer organization and programming I think it is helpful for freshmen and sophomore who haven't taken data structures and algorithms yet or who have taken data structures and algorithms to showcase that they have taken that class and that they have more computer science knowledge than they might come across as. And then lastly, on the education side, we have my study abroad. So this was the university I studied abroad at. And as you can see, it is just two lines. And I was actually at first when I studied abroad, I was unsure whether or not I should put on my resume. And I would say if you studied abroad, definitely put it on there because I would have so many different conversation starters with not only just um, at people at career fairs, but even interviewers. They would see that on my resume and just ask how it was. So you kind of want to throw in those little tidbits in there to uh, either, you know, sort of like humanize yourself or have a conversation starter with um, someone that you're interviewing with. Okay, so the next most important section, in my opinion, is the work experience section, obviously, because we're applying to jobs. So as I said, this is my senior year resume. So I had three different summer internships. I had my junior and then sophomore and freshman one. One thing that kind of sticks out to you is that they all just kind of say summer analyst. Summer analyst really isn't that descriptive. And it's just kind of the generic term that a lot of companies give their summer interns. So in the case for J. JP Morgan, I would, I honestly might have left out of summer analyst. Um, for Bank of America, I was actually doing dev stuff my sophomore year, so I would have put software developer. And then my freshman year, I had a combination of business analyst and project manager uh, roles, so I would have put that as the role itself. So make sure that when you're describing what role you have, you're actually descriptive of what you are doing. Um, don't just put summer analyst or summer intern. You wanna actually you know, give some context into what you were doing. So in terms of actually writing what sort of content to go into your work experience section of your resume, this is probably the hardest part of writing a resume because you're really trying to show what impact you had in like three lines. Um, so firstly, I would say that if you have three years of experience, you know, you have three summer internships, keep each of those to about three lines each. I know I kind of lied here and I have a fourth one right here. Um, <laughs> but you really want to make sure that you are explaining what impact that you had and not necessarily what impact the entire team had. So really pick out what pieces of whatever summer projects that you worked on that you were actually in charge of. Along with that, summer internships are long and it's really hard to condense what you did in 12 weeks into three little bullet points, but just focus on what impact you had that summer that's relevant to the job. And then continuing on with that, just some, you know, typical resume writing stuff. Make sure to start off every single word with a verb uh, or I guess an action verb. So this is something that's really resume 101. You do not want to ever use first person. Um, you want to make sure that you don't include really any nouns, <laughs> I guess like uh, pronouns, <laughs> the right word? Yeah, pronouns. And there you only want to make sure that you start off your sentences with action verbs and then go from there. I know I keep honing on impact, but finally, you also want to make sure to use numbers. So as you can see here, I have 12 mappings and then I have uh, me presenting to people, five senior directors. So in my case, I honestly don't have too many numbers on here. Um, <laughs> looking at my own resume I'm a this is something that I would critique actually so if you're able to say that you know you uh developed this um chatbot that was used by even 20 users is fine 20 internal users or you had 10,000 users that's going to be used by 10,000 people um make sure to put those numbers in there because that is one of the easiest ways to show impact honestly if you don't have any experience so for my freshman resume maybe I could do a video on me critiquing my freshman resume but for my freshman resume I only had one job which the job was I was a math tutor so it wasn't even really relevant to coding or uh, being a project manager, anything like that. Um, but I still put it on there because it showed that I had experience doing something outside of school. So if you have any sort of job, like you worked at an ice cream shop, put it on there. Um, 
especially if it's your first resume. I would say, obviously, you know, you don't see me having a math tutor on my resume right now, but as time goes on, you're gonna honestly come to a point where you have to actually pick out stuff from your resume and you're like, oh shoot, I really don't need this on my resume anymore and it's not really relevant to what my job is and you're just gonna pick and choose what's most relevant to what job you're applying for. Um, so that's just something that comes with more experience. The next section is projects. So if you don't have work experience, this is actually the section that matters the most. and even if you do have work experience, this is the second most important section. So I feel like, especially with software engineering, um, internships, full-time jobs, they really want to see a project, any sort of project or projects, plural. Not in this resume, but my freshman resume, I did a hackathon and I put that project, that hackathon project that I did on there. And I think that's honestly what was able to help me get an interview and get a job for my freshman summer. So if you don't have any work experience, definitely try and work on a project either throughout the semester, do a hackathon, just do something that's, you know, it doesn't have to be too big, but it's something that you worked on for yourself to put on your resume, as well as, you know, you do want to enjoy it too. Now talking about my current project section, Section, or this isn't current, but my <laughs> my senior year project section. As you can see, what probably stands out is that pretty much everything here is like a high fidelity prototype, aside from the first one, which was an Android and iOS cross-platform application. But even though it was a high fidelity prototype, um, a few of these I did actually implement uh, technically. So with this one, I was built with JavaScript, and then this one was also built with JavaScript. Potentially, I think I would have made a modification to saying like JavaScript or you know, JavaScript prototype or JavaScript website, or JavaScript web app or something of that nature um, where I just didn't have high fidelity prototype because a high fidelity prototype doesn't really say what I built it with. And then of course you have to look through my actual resume and see like, oh, it was built with React, Bootstrap and JavaScript. So I think that, you know, if you are building an application and it does just end up in that high fidelity prototype stage where you're in Figma or you're in um, Balsamic for this example, high fidelity prototype is fine. But if you actually get to the point of where, you know, your project isn't fully implemented out, I think it's okay to just put, you know, JavaScript web app. In terms of my projects, you're probably wondering how I got all these projects on here. And these were actually all from school. So these were all class projects. I mentioned this before in my uh, Georgia Tech video, uh, going through my resume that pretty much like after your second year, every single class is a group project. And that is really the case. And it's something that really helps out your resume. So I was able to have a lot of, you know, software engineering experience in a way just for my class projects. So put your class projects on there. So a couple more things on the project section. So looking at my section here, you can see that they are all somewhat similar just because the software development process is <laughs> pretty much the same. So what I did is I tried to pick out things in my projects that I did or my team did a little differently that really made it st stand out as a project. Kind of as a basis, I would say for the first line, you want to make sure just to describe what the project is. So for that first one there, you know, cross-platform application in Dart and Flutter to increase community engagement in Atlanta. Um, so I would, I would just put a first liner of what exactly the project was. And then, you know, for projects where I actually did go through that user research process, that would be my next line. And then finally, I would explain what the final end product of the project was along with how I created it. So just to conclude, the project section really matters a lot, especially if you have uh, less work experience, but really it is the section that I think honestly, mm, potentially matters the most for software engineering uh, internet and jobs. So be sure to spend a lot of time working on this project section as well as doing projects. And then finally, we have the activity section. So people will call these different things. I just called it activities. And as you can see here, I have that I was a part of Hack GT. I was on the marketing team for that. And then I was also in a sorority. Um, so I kept these pretty minimal. As you can see, they didn't really take up too much space here. Um, I do think that having it on here is actually necessary. I think it humanizes you and it kind of makes you seem like, you know, you're not just a person who sits in codes all day, you're just someone who just goes to school and comes back. It shows that you have different interests and it's really something that a lot of interviewers will actually, you know, end up asking you about. I've seen some people put hobbies, just a one-liner of hobbies uh, just for fun. And this is also something that ends up being a conversation starter. So you can list, if you have a really, I would say if you have a really unique hobby, 
you know, put that one liner on there and I think it humanizes you. That's gonna be it for this video. Hopefully you guys were able to learn something from me going through my resume. If you guys are new to my channel, be sure to subscribe. Also give this video a like if you did enjoy it. If you guys do have any video requests, please let me know in the comments down below. I'm always taking video requests and I'm trying to film more. So really, if you have any questions about computer science or just even working in tech or anything like that, let me know in the comments down below and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye guys.